Hey guys, my name is Shai, and first I want to thank you for ignoring my wet hair. I just got out of the shower, but you know, I always get inspired while I'm in the shower because that is, you know, the place of great understanding. <laughs> and if I don't make the video as soon as I get out of the shower, I just won't do it. And I was like, you know, the people who are going to see this video really don't care what I look like, so whatever. <laughs> and um, anyway, the point of this video is to answer the question, what is it like to talk to and channel Saturn. I was actually thinking this morning, should I make a video where I just kind of describe what it's like for me to channel Saturn? And then a friend of mine, Rosalie, <laughs> hi Rosalie, <laughs> emailed me and was like, hmm, what is it like when you channel Saturn? And I was like, okay, message received. I will make that video. And then, yeah, I got in the shower and it was all, you know, the ideas were all coming in. So how to even start? Um, Basically, channeling Saturn for me feels completely normal, and I didn't even realize what I, that I was doing it for the, like my entire life, basically. Um, his energy is, I mean, my energy, I guess. Our energies are so similar um, that I just simply vibrate at the same frequency he does, or not my whole self does, um, uh, just a large chunk of my vibrational bandwidth is the same as Saturn's, right? And I do very strongly suspect that this is connected to my birth chart. Um, you know, a lot of you have heard me say this before. I've got my sun conjunct Uranus and Saturn in Capricorn, right? My sun is at zero degrees Capricorn in the Capricorn solstice with Uranus and Saturn right there, and then Neptune and Mercury further down. So five placements in Capricorn. <laughs> and so what that means to me is that, you know, a huge segment of my vibration is just in the Capricorn, which is Saturnian frequency. That's just like where I'm at. That's just how I vibrate, right? So for me to channel Saturn, I now I know in hindsight that I have been doing it my whole life and just never knew because it, it, it's... So of course, how you kind of understand this will, will kind of depend on how you personally view channeling, what you understand it to be. For me, it just means bringing like a frequency through your body and allowing that frequency to play your body like an instrument. And in my perspective, we're all channeling all the time. We're, we're channeling our own consciousness, right? If you're conscious, you're channeling. You're channeling yourself, right? You're channeling yourself. And of course, there are many different aspects, many different layers to your vibration. So you are channeling many different things all of the time. It's just kind of like how it comes down through the pyramid, right? Through the the tree of consciousness, right? So a huge, large chunk of my consciousness simply vibrates at the same frequency as Saturn. So it's just very, very easy for me to simply just start acting like him, to just like feel his energy flow flowing through me. And it's funny because in hindsight, looking at um, the past, you know, many years of my life, I have essentially been walking around being kind of like Saturn on legs. Like I, I used to operate entirely from my Capricorn side, like from my Capricorn self, right? All of that Capricorn energy, because I was really blocked off from my, my moon energy, my lunar energy, which is eighth house Gemini moon. And I was not really entertaining that at all. So I was just walking around like a, like a Saturn person, like a Capricorn person. I was just completely like that. So to me, that was channeling Saturn, but really, I mean, I'm sure most of you are interested for, you know, more, more like specific, what is it like to channel Saturn specifically? So I kind of just want to walk through some of my experiences with this. So about three years ago now, three years ago when I had my awakening experience, um, the very first being who ever came through for me in meditation, like ever really talked to me. And I had like this real experience of like, a, like communication, right? While I was meditating, it was Saturn. That was the first guy who showed up. And at this point, you know, I had been an atheist before I woke up. So I didn't understand any of this. I didn't know anything. I had no idea. Um, I was just learning to meditate. I was just practicing meditating and Saturn showed up. I, I just saw him, you know, in my inner vision. I saw him there like as a planet with his rings <laughs> and he just started talking to me. <laughs> I could hear him in my inner vision very clear, like my, my inner hearing, right? With my inner hearing, I'd hear him very clearly because um, I was in a quite deep state of meditation and he started showing me things, right? He, he took me on this journey. He told me a story. It was through images and through him speaking, right? He speaks to me and he shows me images. And some of you will be familiar with the story that he told me. He told me that once upon a time, way back in the beginning, he was our solar system's second sun, that our solar system had two suns and that there, it was the sun, that, the yellow sun that we know now and another sun, a blue sun, and that was him. 
that was him. He was our second son. But the problem, there was a problem, right? The problem was that his light was so bright. His light was so bright that it was interfering with the development of like lower frequency consciousness, human consciousness. Humans literally couldn't be here because his light was too bright, right? Because it was always part of the human destiny, if you will, to come very low down into very low vibrational states, you know, the way we have explored on earth, right? And we couldn't do that because his light was so bright because he was this blue star, right? This blue ray star shining this bright, bright light. So, you know, he agreed, he agreed to make a sacrifice and he agreed to have his light siphoned away, right? Because he was a star. He was, he was, he was our second son, right? He was a star and he agreed to have all of his high frequency light siphoned away. Like, um, higher dimensional beings came and like sucked his light off of him and he no longer could be a star anymore because that much of his energy, that much of his light was sucked away from him. And they turned him into a planet and <laughs> stuck him out past Jupiter where he is now, right? And what he showed me through this was that he did this, he, he agreed to this sacrifice. Like this was, this was consensual. He, he agreed to this and he did it out of love for the life for all of life, for the love of life, because he wanted humans to be here. He wanted other life to be in our solar system. And he was like, I will, I will do this. I will take this sacrifice. But <laughs> what happened to him afterwards is, you know, I mean, man, right? Can you imagine making that kind of sacrifice? Some of you can, right? On some level, you've been through a kind of sacrifice like that, but it like the sacrifice itself, even though it was consensual and even though he even though he knew why he did it, even though he understood why it was important, it still tra traumatized him, right? It like wounded him, this deep, deep, deep wound of like, you know, anyone who, is, who has made a sacrifice like that, even, even though you know why you're doing it and you know why it's important, it, 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 if, it's, if the sacrifice is too great, it wounds you, right? It wounds you. Um, so then, <laughs> then we end up with this kind of wounded Saturn figure. And I know a lot of people ask me all the time, like, isn't Saturn bad, right? There's all these things about Saturn being bad. And I mean, yes, to whatever it is that you're tuning into on that, right? Um, I just, I don't really resonate with any of that because when I'm tuning into Saturn, I'm tuning into like the healed version of Saturn, right? Just like anybody, he, like, I basically see the planets, the planetary consciousnesses as people, as any other being, right? Just like any, just like you and me are conscious and you and me have shadow selves and shadow lives and different, you know, we exist through all the frequencies. So do the planets. So does Saturn. So it's like all of that. So just like when you're talking to your friend, when you're talking to Saturn, you, you tune into the frequencies of him that you want to be resonating with. Right. So, so there's that. So anyway, so Saturn was this wounded, <laughs> this like wounded type of energy, um, in our solar system for a long time. Um, but then what he was showing me, what he's shown me over the past few years is that he's been undergoing this really deep healing process. And there's like so much to that story. But one of the things I want to highlight here is that he has like re reclaimed his blue ray, like reclaimed his blue light. What he showed me is that his feminine energy, which was this, his blue ray energy was like pinned down, right? Cause he was all like, um, I mean, you know, even when you look at him out in the sky in a telescope, right? He's all like yellow, like yellow and maybe a little bit of orange and red in there, right? But mostly yellow. So that's like, you know, those lower frequency colors, um, those masculine colors especially, but his, his blue light was pinned down. It was like literally pinned down. He showed me that it was like stopped and pinned and it wouldn't flow, but he's been through this healing experience where his blue light is now flowing. Um, and, then, and so, you know, he shows me all of these things in meditation and I'm just like, is, is this like, did I just make that up? Like, I didn't even know what to think about it. And then I start looking like, you know, I start looking it up going, you know, Saturn second sun and like, it blows my mind. I find out that there's all kinds of myths and stories and like information and knowledge about that. Like, that, that, and I had never heard any of that ever before. Like, like I said, I was an atheist. I didn't know anything about any of this. So I, that was like a huge, huge, big deal in my awakening journey because to receive like that kind of communication and then confirmation on that, like <laughs> such a big deal. So anyway, so when I'm t like talking to Saturn, right, talking to Saturn, it can take place a lot like that where he just comes to me in meditation or a lot when I'm asleep and he'll just talk, right? He'll tell me stories and he'll just talk. A lot of it is like lecturing. It is like having Saturn talk to me is so much like having some like 
stern grandfather figure just giving you like sitting you down and giving you a lecture he just kind of like last night actually in my dreams he, he does this like voiceover in my dreams where he just drones on and on and on and so it's like it's like dude shut up right he just keeps going and going and going like teaching me lessons right teaching me lessons things i'm supposed to know so he does that um but then there's also like a more embodied experience of channeling saturn which i do um occasionally when i'm doing tarot readings right and I think if you watch enough of my videos, you can start to tell because sometimes, sometimes actually, now lately I've been trying to mention when I feel Saturn coming through, but uh, it used to be that I wasn't actually aware of it because like I said, my a large part of my personal frequency is just the same frequency as Saturn. So I don't always like notice when I'm flowing in that direction because it just feels like me a lot of the time. It just feels like me. So over the past few years, I've really had to learn to discern like my natural state and then when like when Saturn is when Saturn's energy is like really coming through me, right? I've had to learn to discern that. Um, so if you watch my videos, because most of the time, it's like in my in my normal human life, for most of my life, I have been like Capricorn shy, right? That's how I've been a lot of the time. But the the aspects of myself that I typically express in my channel here is my eighth house Gemini moon, because that's a whole interesting thing, because I started up this whole project when the North Node in Gemini was transiting over my eighth house Gemini moon. And this whole thing here doesn't really get much like <laughs> this whole channel, right? How much more eighth house Gemini moon can it get? I just sit here and talk about weird spiritual mysteries, right? Like eighth house Gemini moon. It's so funny. So that's what you're mostly seeing, I think, in my in my channel. And like for me, my eighth house Gemini moon has like a whole collective a whole like huge multitude of different personalities to it right that's how i see gemini energy not as just two things but as like a whole multitude of things um so yeah so if you watch all of my tarot readings you see a lot of my gemini selves coming through but if you get used to it you can see when saturn is coming through because i like i changes the way i talk right i suddenly i get like serious and i'll start like banging the table and i start saying things like you should <laughs> or the time is now <laughs> or like stop doing that or like get your shit together or chill the fuck out like specific things that are like Saturn's like mm, right um and I, I I typically I can get really like loud and boisterous and sometimes when he's coming through very strongly I can get quite like more forceful than I would typically intend right that's why I've been making an effort lately to kind of like just specify that like hey this is just the Saturnian energy like coloring my expression here right coloring my expression because depending on who the energy is like you're tuning into right that it colors the way you talk it colors the way you talk <sighs> yeah so you know i actually feel like this is kind of anticlimactic because what does it feel like to channel saturn it honestly just feels like being myself it just feels like being myself and that makes me speculate a lot about you know because I, I, I was always thinking, like, how can I learn to channel? How can I be a better channel? <laughs> well, it's like I've been channeling this whole time, and I wasn't always noticing the ways in which I channel. And I think that is true for everybody, right? I highly, highly, highly suspect that lots of people are channeling the planets without noticing it, right? Because especially, you know, first of all, I think, like, it just different people are tuned into different types of energies. I happen to be very tuned into the planets, right? That's just the way my energy goes, right? Um, some people are very, very tuned into the Akashic records and they can just like see it right in their minds. That's not how I operate, but I can like feel the planets very clearly. Not all of them, by the way. So for me, it's Saturn, Uranus, and Pluto come through very, very easily. A little bit of Mars, sometimes Neptune, right? But like Venus, so hard for me to tune into. Venus and Jupiter are very hard for me to tune into. Um, yeah, and it's funny because Uranus and Pluto are the other two planets in my chart that are very prominent. So if you happen to be a person who's like really tuned into the planets, you're probably t you're probably already embodying the energy of that planet and you could you already are channeling them without really noticing that that's what you're doing. And it's just a matter of like this awareness and changing your expectations about channeling to having to be this like really really obvious experience i think it begins with a lot of subtlety right it begins with subtlety and then the more you notice it the more you can grow with it and learn to use it right you, you learn to utilize your channeling ability by noticing how much you are already channeling right so yeah you know for a lot of people channeling the planets might not be their thing but i am 
like so convinced that so many people could easily already are channeling the planets right and could channel them more specifically if they just thought to do it um and the thing is since i when i woke up i didn't know anything about any of this and so i had saturn come to me in meditation and start talking to me and i was like okay cool like because at this point when i woke up guys i was like a completely blank slate like i knew nothing and because i knew nothing i was just open to literally any kind of experience i was like i'm just starting from square one i'm just gonna completely open the hatch and just like like see whatever like i just experimented with everything and was just see what happened right so i was like okay why not talk to planets right why not talk to planets um and i didn't realize that that i kind of just assumed that like lots of people did that and i've been noticing lately that i don't really know of anyone else who does that so i don't really know why that is i think it could be way more common and i think everyone who na is naturally tuned into the planets can do that um yeah so I don't know if there's anything else to add. Oh, it's very funny. And just uh, an example of how I accidentally, <laughs> how like accidentally tuned into Saturday Night Moe was them. This, you know, cheap tie-dye shirt that I got on Amazon for like $12 after. I just picked it because I liked the colors. Um, and when it showed up on my door, it said on the tag that this particular pattern was named Saturn. <laughs> like, st stuff like that happens all the time. All the time. I'm vaguely remembering... something else there was something else there was some other very interesting experience about saturn coming through meditation but i it's like i can feel it like disappearing from my mind so i'm gonna take that as a sign that i don't need to talk about it i could always make another video later so essentially i would love to make this video a psa to channel whatever it is that you feel tuned into right coffee you want to channel coffee like your coffee beans channel your coffee beans right like what whatever it is that you want to channel if you feel tuned into it you can bring that energy through you and you can channel it and just i think we should all just like go nuts with it why not right why not you, you want to just not you can just not or you could do it <laughs> that's how i see it so sending you so much love and light bye